this is a diy crystal radio they were very popular in the 1920s because they require no batteries and no external sources of power they run strictly on the radio wave and as you can see they are built from a lot of the components are just scraps you would find around your house a piece of pvc plumbing pipe this is two inch uh, a scrap of wood some more scraps of wood old bicycle spoke uh, some washers screws some components you will have to buy likely are the earpiece the the resistor which is very cheap and the diode and otherwise all this is stuff you can either find around the house or at your local hardware store uh, what else do you need to know we're also going to do this old style we're going to make some improvements on this version this version is very old this is a modified boy scout radio and we're going to modify it even more to put on some improvements i've found in the last 10 years so like we're going to uh, change this uh, how this mounts to the board we're going to use this uh, pillar right here and i'm also going to talk about doing it with a uh, kind of new style if you've got access to a 3d printer uh, how you can use that to uh, improve the the radio or to build it faster i guess i should say and also if you just want to go all uh, if you want to go all 3d printed you can uh, print the base i'll put this online so you can just print up the base mount your coil here and go from there okay so uh nothing more to the explanation it's time to get started the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wind this coil and you may say well why is that that's because the coil is going to decide how big a board we need um, so for example this is 19 wire gauge this the size of this wire is 0.91 millimeters and it requires 160 turns and you say how do you know that well i've got a video on that i will link that below uh, we, we won't go through that here because that'll add 20 minutes more um, and also like if you wanted to do 20 wire gauge um, it would be 0.81 millimeter wire and it would be 144 turns so it's going to be shorter yet and if you're going to use 22 wire gauge it would be only 127 turns so it's going to be uh, a smaller this copper part is going to be smaller now you can use the same size form you can use the same length form uh, but yeah the number of windings is going to change and so this across here will change uh, using the 19 wire gauge you can see that our winding is about 156 millimeters long and we're going to use a form that is 100 and let's call it 76 176 millimeters so this length of pipe uh, is 176 millimeters um, and we're going to want our base to be a little bit bigger than that for mounting purposes so you can see i got a little extra over here a little extra over here uh, how much extra is up to you but uh, again that's why we're doing the the winding first and what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with our length of pipe like that and i have a video on how to wind this and through the miracle of the internet we will end up with this so that is step one got to get our coil wound and from there we know the size of the base we're going to need after winding our coil what we need to do next is produce the base and some of these other auxiliary components and i've already cut my piece of wood the same size as the one that we've just shown you and it is roughly 21 centimeters or call it eight and a quarter inches side to side and this way is uh, 17 centimeters or uh, roughly six and three quarters inches those uh, are not critical measurements but yeah close is uh, good if you want to go the 3d printed route this is the base uh, i will put the links to this below and you can notice that it is considerably smaller than the wooden base and that's because i left very little room here to print this much more would add hours to the print so yeah this is uh, one of the drawbacks of 3d printing is it can be slow uh, however it can also add some interesting things like here i don't know if you can read that it says resistor and phone crystal ground antenna and then the coil back here uh, and we have the pillow blocks already made for us which we're gonna have to make out of wood we'll do that and then we have this tower right there 
which we're going to make out of wood. Let's grab those. I've already got them started. Here is the tower and it is, I don't know how thick it is, uh, two centimeters, a little less than an inch, three quarters of an inch. Uh, it is long. It is, uh, four and a half centimeters. Uh, and that is, what is that? In inches, roughly one and three quarters inches by two. I already did that, said that. And how tall is it? Um, it is six centimeters tall or two, a little over two and a quarter inches. And this is what we're going to mount our wiper arm to. This is one of the modifications from the older style. Um, what else we need? Right. We need these pillow blocks and I will show you in detail how to make these. So this is what will be, what the coil will be mounted to. We'll cut some, uh, make some cutouts in these so that it will sit in there nicely. The 3d printed version has those built in like that. And of course, again, the, uh, pedestal here, a little tower is already completed. So now we need to go and we need to create these pillow blocks uh, out of wood for our coil. Next, we want to make the pillow blocks. Now, if you've 3d printed them, you already know what they look like. They look like this. And this is the shape we're going for. You may say, well, the plastic ones are bigger. That's because the plastic's not as strong. So yeah, they have to be printed a little, a little bigger. Plus the fact that these are going to be mounted from the top. The screws will go in from the top just because uh, it is stronger to do that. Uh, and these, the screws will come in from the bottom uh, because we'll have plenty of, of wood here. The wood is stronger than the plastic. So if I screw up into the plastic, the plastic's just, just not going to hold as well. Okay. So how I did this is I made a line across here. It's about five sixteenths or eight millimeters like this. I marked the center point. Uh, from there, I just put the, the tube on here. I don't want to block the, your view. There you go. So I put the tube on here like this, and then I measured the distance here and get my thumb out of the way and measure the distance here and make sure they're the same. So with this tube touching the center point right here, like that, measure this, measure that, and then draw your line around the tube. Now you have to flip this over and you have to repeat exactly the same thing because what we're going to do is we're going to saw through here like this. We're just going to make a series of cuts like this and we need to be able to go the same distance on both sides. So we're going to saw through here this way and we're going to come down until we hit this line and we're going to make sure we hit the line on both sides at the same time. That way, when we chisel things out, it'll be relatively smooth Then we'll sand or rasp that out of there. And that will be our block. We'll make two of those and that's it for the pillow blocks. So what I've done here is I've started my first cut and I don't know if you can see that, but there's the circle right there and I'm going to cut here. And on the other side is that same partial circle and I'm going to cut down, cut down, and I'm just going to do that all the way across here like that. And it's pretty much it. Yes, I am using a hacksaw and yes, it is the wrong saw, but it is what I've got right now. And I uh, wish I had a table jigsaw, but I don't wish I had a better vice, but I don't. However, this is all about DIY and doing with what you got because because if you got to go out and buy a ton of equipment, then it's not exactly DIY. Okay, I think I got it on both sides. I'll have to check in a minute. Can't stick my head in the way to, to look. But just every, every little bit. Make a cut through. And why am I not using my bench vice? Because uh, I can't get it situated so that you can see it. Um, okay. And go this side. 
Actually, I can go all the way over here and just start. This will be one of the final cuts. Now, the closer I get to that circle, the less sanding or rasping I'm going to have to do uh, to finish this out. And of course, I've got to do both of these. Make sure you can still see me. It's better if I go straight across, which I'm not doing a good job of. I tried this saw and the teeth were just too coarse and the block kept trying to jump out of the clamp and everything was moving around so I finally just gave up and said we're gonna use the hacksaw and people are gonna say that's the wrong kind of saw to use on wood and I'm gonna say yeah I know but I think a lot of people have hacksaws and not too many people have specialty fine cut saws otherwise I think if I had to confess, I would say that I probably use my hacksaw for more things that it's not geared for than things it is geared for. Uh, if I cut steel, I usually get out my angle grinder. <laughs> dry okay how close am I getting yeah I'll have to clean that up a little bit um, it's not 100% dry and of course hacksaw is not ideal I get to that line, the less sanding I have to do. Okay, I'd say it's it's worth taking out of there. And yeah, there we go. And that's the side I was I was seeing like that. Okay, now let's uh, chisel that. In fact, it's already starting to break up. If you cut it thin enough, you can kind of just use your fingers or something and start breaking it out of there like that. And yeah, so that's the next step. We'll just uh, clean it. And then after that, we'll rasp it and give it some sanding and chiseling 
Yes, I'm going to use an old screwdriver. That is no good anymore because it was abused. And yeah. Whatever I cannot chisel away, I have to sand away. Okay, that's going to leave me some work, but okay. Do the second one. is going to require significant rasp work. I got careless and I didn't go all the way down to the line on some of the cuts. So now I get to pay for my, my laziness. Yeah, especially right there. Okay, get out the rasp and clean them up. If you have chosen to 3D print your base, then you've already got this tower and you already have the pillow blocks and they're all installed for you. So you can go ahead and screw your coil down. Um, I've already got this one partially down and yeah. Okay. So the other option with the 3D printing was to use the wooden base and the 3D printed pillow blocks like this. And if you've done that, you can screw your coil to the pillow blocks and this will make it a lot easier. And then what you will do is you will put your, your pillow blocks where you want them. And I happen to know that I need a centimeter on each side, given this like that, like that, like that. Okay. And then I will abut them against the back edge back here. And then all I need to do is take something like this is a piece of coat hanger, but any kind of metal rod drill bit, what have you, and punch down in these holes, make a mark just so put them in there and tap them lightly with a hammer, all four of them, one, two, three, four. And then you'll be ready to drill your pilot holes for your screws to set these down on the base. Then you will have your uh, mounting tower for your wiper arm. And to do that, what we need to do is you will center it here. And again, taking your metal rod and there's three screw holes, take them in there, give them a tap, one, two, three. And then you'll drill those three pilot holes and you'll be ready to mount those. Uh, you'll screw this one in from the underside. These you can screw in from the top side. Okay, so let's go on to the next one, which is using the uh, wood. That's going to take a little bit more explanation. So we're going to go into depth on that one. Just like with the plastic pillow blocks, we're going to want to screw our coil down to the wooden ones. And that will help us position where we want this to be. 
and then we can take measurements and then we will know where to drill to put in our mounting screws. So what I've done to find this center point is simply to measure the length of the block and this comes out about 7.2 7 and so there would be a halfway and I made a mark right there and then I go across here and it's two centimeters wide and then I just made a mark in the center did that to both of them and then what we'll do is we'll screw our uh, coil down there and then we'll be able to position it on our baseboard and yeah we'll just do repeat basically what we did with the plastic I have the pillow blocks screwed in place and for those of you with sharp eyes you're going to notice that I didn't actually go right in the center here um, I didn't screw it right to the center of the block I decided there was just too much hanging out over here so I went this way yeah it's one of those things you can do when you're designing your own radio you can say I don't like the looks of that um, and you can fix it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some measurements I'm going to line it up on on the left side over here I'm going to measure the right side I get 2.4 then I'm going to scoot it over here until I get 1.2 which is half there we go so that should be centered um, check to make sure everything looks square line it up across the back here and then I just take my pencil and I'm going to mark this edge and that edge this edge and that edge and now I can take measurements uh, against this and transfer that to the bottom and I'm going to know where to drill and where I'm going to want to drill is in the meteor part of of this I don't want to be here where it's too thin and I don't want to be over here where I'm going to break out so I want to make sure I hit right in this zone right here where I get the uh maximum uh, maximum grip maximum wood and uh, so that's uh, next step what I've done is I've done my measurements I looked at this and eyeballed it and decided that right in here would be the thickest part of the wood the best place to uh, to drill through and uh, it'll be the strongest place so what I did is is I measured from here up to here that is 6.5 centimeters and then halfway along here is uh, from here to halfway through the pillow block this way is 2.3 centimeters on the back side it is 0.6 centimeters to here and again 2.3 centimeters this way and then of course repeated all that on this side so now what I need to do is go downstairs and I need to drill through here and here and the other side uh, all the way through the board and then I will be able to put screws or something through there and set this in place and then mark on the back side where I'm going to need to drill holes here pilot holes for the screws and then we shall be able to mount these pillow blocks and we will be all equal between the plastic the 3d printed base and the wooden base and uh, yeah so we'll go from there as you can see we've got the holes drilled through the board and pilot holes drill into the wooden blocks like that now if you've got if you're using the plastic pillow blocks you've already got these screwed down and uh, yeah that's as it should be on the back side I have countersunk yeah you should be able to see that I've countersunk the four holes so that when I put in my screws and yes I'm using sheetrock screws uh, when I put in my screws they won't be scraping on the on the table or wherever I have this set okay so let me do that I'm going to screw the pillow blocks in place I'm going to leave the coil off for right now because we still have to do the tower and got to put that on it's going to be a similar process we're going to mark drill and put it in place let's move on to this tower 
If you're using the 3D printed parts, uh, go ahead and mark it as we discussed earlier. You want to center it this way on the board and I would give myself about five millimeters from the edge of the board back here just because it looks better. You don't have to. I mean, you can do it flush, but yeah, like I said, it's, it's a looks thing. So go ahead and center it, mark it as we said earlier, and then you'll be drilling your three holes from the bottom. Uh, you can, if you've got really long skinny screws, this has been countersunk on top and you can just, uh, sink three screws in from this side, but I, I, I don't have any, so I'm not doing that. Okay. I'm going to finish this out in the wood. Uh, but if you're doing the, the 3d printed part, go ahead and do that. What I've done is I've marked this out for our wooden column here, our wooden tower. And you can see the markings, mark the edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two holes here and here. And this is about one centimeter from this edge and one centimeter from this edge of this board. And then I'm going to run two screws up through the bottom like that. We're also going to need a screw hole here on top for the wiper arm. You can drill it now. You can drill it later. Uh, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do it now because I'm going to have the, the drill press uh, running anyway. So might as well do it. Okay. So the next thing again, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to drill these two holes and it's going to be very similar to when we did these blocks, uh, drill the hole, you know, mark it on the bottom of the, of the uh, piece of wood and then go ahead and then just screw it down. I've got my holes drilled. I've got my pilot holes here and I got my two screws. And so it's time to put this in place. Now, whether you're using the 3d parts like these, or you are putting together the 3d printed version, the total printed version, we should all be in about the same position right now. Our blocks should be in position and our tower should be in position. And then we're ready to do the electrical work. Let's do a brief overview of our circuit before we go on. The antenna is going to connect here. The signal is going to come in to this side of the coil and it's going to pass through the coil. It's going to come out the other side. Our other lead is going to connect here to this point. From here, we have the earphone and our resistor over to this connection point. We have our diode, our 1N34A diode, another connection point, the wiper arm. Now you notice this is connected to the wiper arm and then it passes on over to the ground wire. These clips, these are called fanny stock clips and they are getting hard to find these days. One uh, substitute you can use is this is a stainless steel, uh, what do you call it? Clothespin. And you can literally just wind the wire. You bear off the wire, you wind it through here and you screw it down and then you can do this and clip your wire in there. Now, the reason I recommend a quick release is because if you're listening and a thunderstorm or something approaches, you need to disconnect that antenna quickly. And I throw my wire outside the house when I'm not using it. I, I throw my antenna wire outside the house. That way if lightning strikes it, it just goes to ground. Okay. So if you can find the fanny stock clips, okay. I think they're still available on Amazon, but, uh, they look like this nowadays. They've made them cheaper. And if not, then here's a good substitute. The other thing we're going to talk about are these brass washers, and these are for more permanent connections, things you don't remove every day. Let's uh, do a close up on those and I'll show you how they're made. They're not just two brass washers and I'll show you why. As you can see, if I try to clamp the lead in between two flat washers, it creates a ferocious angle. And what happens is they tighten it down it'll just squirt it right out of there and that's undesirable. So what we want to do is we just want to give a little bend to one of the two washers so that as you tighten them down, it actually pulls it in towards the center. And I have done that by, you can see this one. It's uh, got a slight bend to it, not a lot. And it doesn't take a lot. If you over bend it, you may have a poor contact, but what I've done is I've put them in a vise in the past and hit it with a hammer, but I oftentimes got too much bend. It was hard to control. So this time I just took a plain old chisel and I stuck it in the middle and I whacked it with a hammer on the board and you can see the dent. And 
yeah, this way I could control the, the bend a lot better. And it's quite easy. Uh, it's, uh, you don't have to have any special equipment. Don't even have to have a vise. Just anything that's uh, like a chisel and a hammer and a piece of wood. Once again, we'll start with a 3D printed version since it's going to be a little bit easier. Things are already prepared for us. But what's going to happen is we need to wrap the wire underneath this. We need a good connection here under that point. We're going to go into this hole right here. That comes up to this. We're going to go across here. We're going to go down this side to this hole. And I'm going to grab the wire out from underneath there and pull and then it's going to be connected to that right there so uh, nothing to it but to do it I just need to go roughly about the middle of this wire I will poke one side down and I will grab it with my forceps grab the wire and it is a bit of a challenge because this wire is very stiff. I actually had to drill the hole out to make sure that I could, I could, uh, getting it. Okay. Ah, okay. And there we go. So I pull enough of the wire out. I'm going to just temporarily wrap it underneath here and get my hands out of the way. So it will go underneath there later and we're going to need to strip this wire and that's going to be very important. Now we need to do the same thing on the other side and oh, I think a little bit too far past there. Make sure you all can see what I'm doing. And I just need to grab the end of that wire right there. But again, I had to drill these holes out on this side because the, um, the holes were a little too small. And I put a little bend in the tip of that wire. Help me grab it. And I couldn't get my forceps in there to grab it. And so, there we go. Uh, hopefully, I didn't stick my head in the way. And we want to press this down and we're going to need to remove the insulation off of this wire or our radio is not going to work and then we will come over here and I'm just going to wrap it around here temporarily but again this needs to be stripped so again we're going to need to take the enamel off of here connect it to wrap it around these uh, underneath these washers I'm going to solder mine on the washers that's an option it's a good option comes here we're going to remove the enamel off of here very carefully. Come back here. We're going to attach it again to our uh, fanny stock clip. And that's going to be it for that. Let's see what it takes to strip one of these wires down. I won't go through all of them, but we'll do one of them. And we're just going to repeat that process for all of them. First of all, we're going to give ourselves enough wire that we can easily wrap around here. It's better to have too much than to too little. Uh, have too little because it's hard to add the wire back on once you cut it off. Now, I prefer to use a knife. Obviously, you can cut yourself doing this. Um, sandpaper is a much safer option. You can just sand the finish off of here. But it does take some effort. Now, I want to start back here where it first touches the washer. And I want to go all the way out to the end and I just want to start stripping. So, yeah, it would be better if I had leather gloves, but I want to go all the way around and strip that off of there. I don't know if you can see those flakes coming off of there. 
if you leave any insulation, Murphy's Law says that is where it will come in contact with your washer and you will not get a good connection. So, all the way around, all the way around. And there, let's see, yes, you can see how it's nice and shiny and copper here and brown here. Yeah. So if you're not going to solder, we're just going to wrap it underneath the bottom washer and it doesn't really like to stay focused, but yes, it's going to be underneath the bottom washer and the component will go between the two washers. So wire is between the board and the bottom washer and the component will be between the two washers. Okay, so I'm going to solder this and then I'm going to go through the other connections um, and then we're ready for the next step. I have bared the wire off as we discussed in five places. One, two, three, four, five. Definitely don't forget this. And if you have an inexpensive or any kind of continuity tester around home, you can check to make sure your connections are good and the back two should be continuous. So I should get a beep. Yes. These should be continuous, should get a beep. And if I have bared this well, then I should get a nice continuous beep from that. Now we're going to go on and we're going to look at the wooden base model and we're going to do primarily the same thing. These will not change at all. These will be the same. The big difference will be how we run the wire around the pedestal block in order to help hold it down. Well, here we are with the wooden base model and let me zoom in here. It is time to wire up the pedestal. Now I've removed it uh, because we need to, uh, well, th in the wiring process, I want to run the wires underneath here. So if I just run the wires across here down the sides and then out this direction, then what's going to happen is they'll get loose and yeah, it won't be beautiful and you know who knows they could get broken. So what I want to do is run them down the sides and then cross underneath the block like that and that way uh, when I screw the block back down it'll hold them in place. But the trick to that is remember we drilled two holes here in the bottom and I don't want the wires to pass along that hole otherwise when I screw the uh, block back down it'll break the wire which is a bad thing. So what I've done is I have made a mark that is between this hole and this is the hole is the uh, mounting hole for the wiper arm and the hole that's on the bottom it's, and that was uh, one and a half centimeters on this piece of wood. And so all the way around the, the wood I have marked that line and on three sides I'm going to cut a groove in here just so the wire lays in there nicely. and. Yeah, on the top, I'm not going to make a groove because I want that wire to be sticking up so that when I screw the wiper arm washer down on there, it's going to make good electrical contact. Okay, so it's time for me to go cut that groove in there. Uh, you can use a saw, a Dremel, whatever it takes, but uh, yeah, that's, that's it. And then we'll come back and we'll put some wire on here. Lines are cut. I just used a hacksaw. Went around on three sides. And you may say, how come you've got the washers and clips out here and the answer is because this groove is going to define where I want to line these up on. Yeah, you don't really want them like, you know, you don't want this here or whatever. You kind of want it to look nice. So this is where the groove touches the board right there and that will line up these two pieces this way. So I'll just draw a line across here and then somewhere out here, I want my uh, the, this side to line up and then ditto on this side. The groove touches the board right about there. So I want this wire to come out here straight and then where I put this one will define where that one goes. And again, this is just an aesthetics thing. If I, uh, if I put this here, will it not work? No, no, it doesn't have anything to do with it. It just, it would look kind of strange and kind of whatever. So yeah. Um, that's uh, what I'm going to do right now. Let's uh, 
let's wrap this thing. I don't need much wire right here. So I will do this and wrap my wire tightly around here. Go over the top. Yeah, there we go. Make sure you guys can see this like that. And you can see where it goes along the bottom like this. And then when I screw it down, this, these wires will be given the groove. Uh, the wires will be held in place forever. And yeah, okay, so let me do that. I'm gonna screw that down. I'm gonna make my markings here and here and here, and then we'll uh, drill those holes, pilot holes for the screws, ditto on this side, and we will be caught up with our 3D printed version. And I drew out my lines. I punched the holes where I'm gonna put my screws. That's true around the board. And I got my parts set out so I can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to drill those holes out there, drill pilot holes for my screws. Uh, then I am going to, just like the other board, I'm going to scrape these wires and make my junctions. Uh, of course, I'm going to solder these again. You don't have to, but, uh, you know, scrape that wire, get it under that uh, washer, attach it to your clips, whatever you're using over here. And we'll be all caught up with the 3D printed board. And then the next step will be a... Uh, wiper arm. I've got my wiring done. Now you notice uh, as per earlier, I did this in a triangle just because space considerations. And um, I've soldered mine uh, like I did with the other board, but again, you can just wrap those. Uh, and got my fanny stock clips over here. And pretty much all I did was align things across like this, align the screw holes uh, across like that. Do not forget to scrape your wire on top of this pedestal tower, whatever you want to call it. And you may ask how far apart are these screws in order to clamp the components? And the answer is about four and a half to five centimeters. So yeah, uh, something like that. I just use the component to, to set that. So, um, where are we? Well, if we, uh, take a look at this, Zoom out a touch. We can see that we are in equal position on both of these. So the next step is we need to create the uh, wiper arms and mount those. And then the last step will be, of course, to mount our components and give it a test. We're ready to make our wiper and I've got our stainless steel rods. Um, I'm, I've got this from the, uh, from the hardware store and a piece of old copper tubing from an air conditioner replacement. I've never used an alcohol lamp. I used my gas stove until we had a gas leak. And then I said, no, you can keep your gas stove. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to heat this red hot and then I am going to bend a loop in it. And the reason I need to heat it, even though it's only a two millimeter rod is because this is spring stainless. So if you're using a bicycle spoke, it's the same thing. It's spring stainless and it is difficult. It is stubborn. Uh, it does not like to bend. And got a breeze back here. I'm on the back porch. And there we go. It's starting to get a little red. Stop that. Okay, um, I've got a loop. It's not a great loop. You don't want a P. You actually want a balloon shape. We'll see if I can fix that. I should be wearing my leather gloves, which would be a smarter thing to do. So 
But yes, the alcohol flame works. It's slower. And yes, I am using old pliers. So I may have to live with this P shape. Um, in the ideal world, I would bend this so that the um, well, let me give it a try. I can just show you. So that the loop is at the end. It's not great. That might work. The problem is if the loop is not perfectly round, the screw, when you put the screw through there, it will bind and the, the thing will jerk around and it's very hard to use. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're going to use this copper. We're going to put the copper over the outside of that. We're going to put a small piece of copper over the outside of it and then drill a hole through it. And that hole will be very precise. It will be a very round hole. And it will allow us to do a much better job. So actually I think this hole is too small. But I will measure it and see. Now you may say, why haven't I cut the, the stainless off yet? And that's because if I don't like this loop, I can just cut off this much and I haven't lost anything. Um, however, if I uh, do the whole thing, If I cut off the whole piece and then I need to cut off the loop and I throw that whole piece away. So doing it this way, the most I waste is just this piece out here. Here are the loops we ended up with. This is the better shape, but this is what I usually end up with. Something that looks more like a P and this is more like a balloon on a stick. Now I've cut out my two pieces of copper tubing from my, from the larger pipe and also, this is the loop that failed. I just cut that off of there and redid it. So um, now what we're going to do is we are going to we are going to take this copper and make sure the inside is clean. And we're going to put it over our loop and then we are going to pound it. Uh, first, I'm going to smash it with a pair of pliers to make sure that it's somewhat in position. Then I'm going to take a piece of hardwood and I'm going to lay it over the top of there and hammer it on this anvil until it's all conformed in there. Uh, this one, you say, well, that's, that's not going to fit. And that's true, but if I smash this copper down a little bit, make it oval, it'll slide over there and I can do it. I have pre-crimped these with pliers. I've smashed it all around there so it will stay. And now all I have to do is take my block of wood and I wish I had another hand place it over here get that one out of the way and hit it with a big hammer like that and I don't know if you can see but it the uh, a little bit you can start to see the wire uh, the shape of the wire inside there and you just really want to mash it down around there really hard so uh, yeah just keep doing it until they are um, melded together Then I'm going to find the center of this hole and I'm going to 
punch it because we're going to drill our hole there for our mounting like that. My punch is not great. There we go. Drill that and that's pretty much it. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other one and we'll go from there. Now we're ready to work a little bit with our wiper arm. We're going to put this washer in place. We're going to need three of these fender washers and these are stainless, of course. And we're going to put that one in place. Now, what's going to hold that down is we have a screw, a fender washer. This felt pad, this is just a, a thing you buy at the hardware store that you either glue or tack or whatever on the bottom of a chair leg that keeps the, the uh, floor from getting scuffed up. Then we're going to have another washer. So this piece is going to act as our spring right here, that washer or that felt washer. And then we're going to put this in place like that. And yeah, I know you, my hands are in the way. Let me get this started. So we've got our screw in place and our washer, felt washer, washer, our wiper arm, and then our last washer, which is our contact washer. So we're not going to tighten this down yet. What we're going to do is we need to know two things. First of all, we need to know how long this, this rod is going to be, and we're going to mark that. But if you just mark it like right here, and then you go like this, ah, uh, you run out of rod. So you need to go all the way to the end where it look where it's touching and then here and then say, Oh, I'm going to need about two inches or five centimeters beyond that. Um, so I got my piece of tape right here and I will mark that so that I can go cut that off. Now, of course, this is all going to same stuff is going to apply to our 3d printed radio and, uh, Okay, so we got that marked. The next thing we need to mark is we need to know, we're gonna to have to sand the, the enamel off of this wire and we're gonna to need to know where to do it because we don't wanna just like start sanding willy nilly. So just put a lot of pressure on here and go like this and use it to mark the surface. Now, if that's not showing up, which is not, then what I usually do is I get a piece of sandpaper and I put it underneath the wiper arm like this. And then I do the same thing. And making sure not to get too far off track. I want to know just where the where the uh, wiper is contacting the coil. Now, let's see. Yeah, that's, that's good. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this down. We're going to cut the rod. I'm going to mount a knob on here now. Yeah, it's going to depend on what you want. Uh, some people just like put a plastic tube on here. Uh, I'm going to put a wooden ball. So I'm going to drill a wooden ball and I'm going to glue that on here. Um, I've got a video on how to do that. I'll put that in the description below. So yeah, and then I usually put a little uh, bend right in here to uh, just make it a little more comfortable when I'm when I'm tuning. And so, okay. Uh, we need to cut the rod and then we need to finish sanding this and we want a nice shiny coppery strip uh, removed and then we're going to want to clean the copper out from between the coils otherwise it'll short. So uh, let's uh, go do that. Here are our two radios and I have put the final components on this one so you can see where we're going to go with this. We have our resistor, our headphone, and our diode and got those screwed down and uh, that's pretty much it for this radio. So I'm going to do that step by step over here for the 3D printed version and you can see how it's going to go and then we'll go give them a test. Let's zoom in here on these three screws because that's where it's all going to happen. Now the first thing I do is I add some wire to my earphone. These are the earphone wires and 
I like to make it a little thicker because trying to secure these little fine wires here, that's a bear. So I've already done that to another one and I've got this thicker wire where I soldered it on there and did all that. I've got videos on that in case you're interested. So the first thing we need to do is, as it says right here, resistor and earphone and get my trusty screwdriver handy. I've got to keep my hands out of the way as much as possible so you can see what's going on here. So we got that in there and I'm going to tighten this down just a smidge. Then I'm going to sneak one of these earphone wires in here a little too tight. Get that in there. And I'm just tightening down this connection. There we go. So everything is immobile. Got a good connection there. Then this connection is going to be a little trickier because we've got to get three wires in here at the same time. Uh, the wooden one, we have the diode up here, but this one, I put the diode back here on this side. And the easiest thing to do is to secure the opposite end. So I'm going to secure this end over here. So the diode is not flopping around at least. And does it matter which way you install the diode? And the answer is no. In most applications, yes, very much so. In this application, not at all. So we have our resistor and our diode leads here. And now we're going to put our earphone lead in there. And I'm going to try to hold everything in place. I do that and not too tight because I don't want to break leads. So there we have it. Um, those are our connections for this radio. And this one is ready to to go test. I've got our ground hooked up and our antenna hooked up and I've been playing with it a little bit and yeah, it really works. Um, here, have a listen. YouTube will not let me play more than a second or so without taking down my video. So that's nothing I can do anything about, but let's uh, tune across here and you can kind of hear the different stations come and go. Um, there's one predominantly strong station, which you're going to hear the most of, but if I could tune in, there's, I've gotten up to 17 uh, stations that uh, I can pick up. You know, it depends on your aerial, your ground, all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, uh, thing really works. No batteries, no external power, and just a lot of fun to play with. Okay, well that was it for constructing this very simple and my best version of the Modified Boy Scout Crystal Radio. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your electronics projects.